uh, regional coordinators. Uh, so we have two of the Scotland coordinators with us here today, and we have um, so we have Richie from uh, uh, Lowland Scotland, well the Lowland Scotland coordinator I should say, <laughs> uh, Richie is from Ireland himself, and uh, we have Maria who is the Highland and Islands uh, Scotland coordinator for, uh, for the Seed Sovereignty Programme as well, and uh, we have Dennis who's from the Lancaster uh, Seed Library. I don't know if people are waving. <laughs> um, and I'm Charlie, I'm from the uh, Seed Sovereignty Programme as well, from the Gaia Foundation. Um, and uh, yeah, so it, it was, we just ended up deciding uh, to show short presentations and um, to have a bit of networking time. So I, I did put in the invitation to bring seeds. I don't know if people have brought seeds or could perhaps think of a seed they can mention. Um, I wanted to start by saying uh, thanks. Thank you to you know all the people that have made this kind of meeting possible. So the Northern Rail Farming Conference coordinators, um, all the farmers and growers, uh, the people that have saved seeds for millennia and the seeds that we may be talking about today. Some of them may be uh, older varieties, which uh, is the case, I believe. Um, so yes, firstly, just a lot of thanks. Uh, I'm personally really, really grateful to be here and I'm sure I'm amongst real enthusiasts. Maybe we have some beginner seed savers here as well. I don't want to make assumptions, but I know there is a lot of expertise in the room already, not just uh, from the speakers. And we do have another seed uh, related session on Wednesday, uh, which is the, around the question, why is seed sovereignty important? Uh, so I just thought I would mention that here now as well. Um, and that was actually a session that the organisers asked for. So they came back to us and said, oh, would you do a session on that? And I think it is really important. Um, so today we're not going to touch so much on why it's important necessarily, apart from if that comes out, you know, in the presentation or in the breakout rooms. Um, we are going to invite you into breakout rooms to share uh, what you can offer and what you need from a seed network. We're calling it a network, but really it's um, just a term for thinking about how we might connect or we're already connected to each other. Um, so, so yeah, and at the end of this, I would like to share a survey um, from Gaia uh, Foundation Seed Sovereignty Programme uh, which will ask a bit about how, if you've been involved or influenced by the programme and, you know, how that experience has been for you. Um, you can fill it out if you haven't directly come across it before now, because by the end of this evening's uh, session, you will have heard a bit more about it, <laughs> because three of the, us here today are from the programme. Um, so, yeah, I think Andy will say a bit about the technical side of things. Okay. Sure. We'll go a few presentations Thanks. and then, yeah. Thanks, Charlie. Hi. So, hi everyone. My name is Andy Goldring, and um, I work with the Permacul Permaculture Association, um, but also a really passionate seed saver. So, I'm very pleased to be helping on the technical side here today. Um, I'm sure you're all very seasoned Zoom professionals, but just in case, if you move your mouse around on the bottom left hand side, there's a mute button and a stop video. <coughs> So that's where you can control your sound and video. And if you go up to the top on the right hand side, there's speaker view and gallery view, and you can toggle that to give yourself different views. If you want to see everyone, then it will say speaker view. If you want to see one person big, then click it, and that will give you the speaker view, but it will say gallery view, which is counterintuitive. Um, I'm recording the call because that's what we've been asked to do. But if you're not comfortable being recorded, then you could um, mute your, well, you could basically take your name off and you could stop your video. Um, we're going to do some screen sharing, which shouldn't affect you, but if, if it doesn't look right, there's a little um, drop down list on that screen sharing thing, which means you can change the ratio of the screen. And that gives you can give you a better view at some times. And um, then there's a chat there at the bottom of the middle. And if there's anything you want to ask me technically, then um, please do. And I'm going to put a message in the chat. And at some point, if you could just get back to me to say where you're from, 
then I can be setting up the um, breakout rooms and um, during presentations and then we can go smoothly into the breakout rooms, rooms um, when we need to. So yeah, any technical questions, let me know. And back over to Charlie. Thank you, Andy. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. And while Charlie's doing that, this is a good opportunity to say, if you go up to the top, it will say, you are viewing Charlie Gray's screen and on both view options, if it's not looking as you want it to, you can, you can change the way it looks there with the zoom ratio. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I did put it in widescreen. I don't know if that's useful for people or not. So that may Fine. have an impact. Um, yeah. So like I said, my name's Charlie Gray. I'm, uh, since July, um, I'm the Northern Regional Coordinator for the Gaia Foundation's Seed Sovereignty Program. Um, I'm also um, a co-founder, a director and a community and training coordinator at Horton Community Farm, uh, which is a cooperative and it's a land permaculture centre uh, in Bradford. And um, that's where I started saving seeds. Um, as a community grower, it, just, it was just a natural thing for me. They, started ending up in my in my hands and in boxes and trays at home and I was trying to work out ways to organize them <laughs> and share them and um, so uh, this is really a presentation just a short presentation to tell you a bit more about the uh, seed sovereignty program and the fact that there is uh, now a northern uh, coordinator um, somebody was working in the north but they were actually working uh, all across uh, east of England. Um, so it was from uh, the north um, and also, um, you know, near London. So it was a huge area they were trying to cover. Um, but um, even, even uh, with that sort of smaller amount of work, the um, page uh, was able to reach out and I know connected to lots of uh, farmers and growers in the north. Um, so the Seed Sovereignty Programme as a whole and also in the North is for um, sort of two groups of people, seed producers and uh, seed savers. And without wanting to draw kind of hard and fast distinctions between the two, um, the programme looks, is looking to increase the amount of seed uh, produced in the UK. And uh, the, the main focus is on farmers, market gardeners and food producers that might be able to produce seed on a, um, a larger scale. So for sale or for use in their own systems, as well as signposting and helping to network community growers, allotment growers and home gardeners. And also to point people to seed that is sold uh, through companies uh, that we may be working with. Um, so, yeah, so I've just written a, a few reasons that came to mind quickly for why, to, why saving seeds. Um, I'm sure um, you'll be, hopefully most of you will be aware of, of most of these reasons, but obviously to uh, reclaim our genetic, the genetic diversity of our seeds and therefore genetic resilience, um, relocalization of food um, in order to adapt to climate change, um, and rebuild agroecological systems where people live in the cities as well as uh, in the countryside, in rural areas, and to build uh, food cultures uh, where people are living. And also it helps with building community resilience. So like I say, I'm a community grower and it, I've seen how it can bring people together. Um, what kind of uh, seed is the Seed Sovereignty Programme looking at? We're looking at open pollinated seed. Um, that is both in vegetables and grains. You'll hear about uh, grains from Maria and you'll hear about uh, a vegetable or some vegetables from Richie. Um, we aim to uh, promote heritage varieties and land races as well as uh, varieties that have been adapted to our regional climates and soils and we also look at new varieties and cultivars so obviously uh, being on these islands 
um, and in in the north our food comes from all over the world as do our seeds and um, in particular in the north we're often trying to grow with seeds that are from the south even if they're from uh, from the British Isles and so you know adapting them uh, locally is really important um, so uh, as you know seed has been saved uh, since before the beginning of agriculture and it's it was a huge part of uh, creating agricultural systems and uh, seed companies have only really been around for 150 years or so and legislation and uh, destruction of our uh, ag diverse agricultural system and lots of other factors have reduced the number of local and open pollinated seed. Um, and at the moment we're currently still importing 80% of our seed, even if some of that's from Europe, um, we're only producing 20%. So three years ago, the Seed Sovereignty Programme was launched and uh, it has been working with the Seed Co-op um, and other companies, I should say, uh, like Real Seeds. But the Seed Co-op is uh, considered for this programme in some ways to be in the north. So, um, you know, this is one of the largest seed companies in the area. Um, and yeah, so how are we doing it? We are reconnecting networks and we are... Um, creating a training program, which includes mentoring and peer support. Um, in the why, why is Seed Sovereignty Important session, you will hear a bit more about, um, a little bit about legislation and the policy environment uh, that we're in from Sinead. And we, you know, it is, it is a program with a public face, so it is about general awareness raising as well. And um, these are just a selection of varieties of seeds saved um, in the UK, I'm not sure that these are from Northern England, but they're photos from the Seed Sovereignty Programme. Um, and this is our map. So if you want to get in contact uh, with any of us, uh, we're all, you know, the coordinators are on this map. And these are the um, social media details for uh, if you want to contact me on social media. Um, so that's, that's it for me, just a hopefully short enough introduction. <laughs> Um, so, I will stop sharing my screen. And um, obviously, yeah, if you do have any questions, it's probably um, worth just holding them for now. Um, and I think probably we'll leave a short amount of time for questions at the end of all the presentations. Um, so, yeah, so next we've got a presentation from Dennis, who is from Lancaster Seed Library. Um, and uh, has been doing some brilliant work um, saving seeds and learning more about seed saving across the globe as well. Uh, so Dennis, shall I pass over to you? Yes. So can you see my screen? Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. So yeah, hello everyone. I'm Dennis. I'm, I'm Greek, but I've been living in Lancaster for um, eight years, but now I live in Coventry. And um, I will present to you the Lancaster Seed Library. I have to say that this presentation is a part of a bigger presentation that uh, we use when we do um, seed saving training. But I had to cut it out, and normally it takes about a couple of hours, but I had to cut it down to five minutes, so it will be only the essential here. So <clears throat> uh, the Lancaster Seed Library was uh, launched in 2015 by money we got by the Heritage Fund. And uh, it is based at the, at the Central Lancaster Library in Lancaster. I don't know if uh, you have been in Lancaster, but the library is a really nice building at the center of, uh, of, the, of the city. And our, our library, one, the one element of our library is based at the Central, lab, at the central Library. And, if it's, and it is based on three key steps. So the three steps is that people borrow seeds and learn how to save seed uh, by attending the workshops or, or by you know teaching themselves. Uh, they sow the borrowed seed and um, they grow plants. Is it so, is something gray uh, covering my? No, okay, sorry. All looks fine. Okay, cool. So and they grow the plants to save the seed. And the last step is they harvest the seed. 
and they return, keep some as much as they want, they return some to the seed library to keep it going. So we have this circle, which is basically um, a circle which is maintained by the people who, who like to take part in the seed library. And the one element is of the seed library is our cabinets, which are based in a very, um, in a, uh, which, are, which are based in the central library in a spot where everyone can see it stay away when they move, walk into the library, they can see our cabinets. And we have the income cabinet uh, where people go and put their seed. Then we have a look at the seeds, check the quality, and then put in, if, they're, if they look fine, we put them in the outgoing where people come and take seeds. And also we have these two logbooks where people sign, you know, when they brought the seed, what they brought, and sometimes they leave a, a nice message. And also we based the, so the seed library is uh, designed based on permaculture principles. So we try to have the maximum output using uh, the minimum effort. So this is basically self-sustained, it works on its own. I mean, we, we check now and then the seeds and the quality and uh, move them to the outgoing, but mostly it's uh, community run. And also we're part of a, we're part of a wider network of community groups in, uh, in Lancaster. So maybe you can see this uh, small um, cotton, made of uh, cotton packets of seeds that were made by Victoria, who is also in this uh, Zoom, and her group called Sewing Cafe. And also we have this, um, uh, this, um, oh, I forgot the word now, sorry. This thing where we, we pin, um, posters from other community groups so people can, you know, have, that are interested in the seeds, they can also see a community farm in Lancaster and what's going on in terms of food. And our seed library also has legs. So what we do is uh, we can take these small cabinets and take them to different events. So this is uh, our annual event that happens in Lancaster, the, our potato day, where people can buy uh, spats but also they have a look at the seed library and ask us question, take seeds, we swap seeds. And um, here is a picture of me where I'm on potato day and I'm um, sorting some quinoa seed that we've grown at the seed library. So people also see how they can save seed and we sell skills. Our other element is our, our growing beds, which are based on, on our community farm called Claver Hill um, Food Project, where we, we grow plants and this, so we grow different plants. We've been growing quinoa, uh, different types of corn and save seed. And also people can come. It's open to everyone, same as the cabinets and people can come and they, exper they can experiment and learn how to save seeds. And also we adapt to change. So during the lockdown, just before I probably, you remember that, uh, that Monday in March when lockdown started, so on the Friday, when people were saying, you know, something's going to happen on Monday, we went to the library, we took all the seeds, and during lockdown, we were posting them to people. So because we didn't know for how long the library would be closed. So, and that's another permaculture pro approach. We adapted to chains and, uh, yeah, we adapted. So that's it. Uh, if you want to find out more, visit our Facebook page, or you can visit the Lancaster Center Library. Lancaster is a very nice town, so come and see us. And also you can visit Clever Hill Community Farm in Lancaster again and find out more about the seed library. So thank you for listening. That's it. Thank you, Dennis. Will you put the link uh, to the Facebook group and, um, you know, a couple of links in the chat, Dennis? Yeah. Thanks. Okay, fantastic. Um, so, yeah, we just thought a few short presentations to give a flavour of what different people are doing. Um, and then we'll do the breakout rooms and have the networking, uh, you know, to give people a bit more of a chance to have a chat. Um, so, um, I think it's Maria next. Yeah, Charlie, can you please go to slide 22? Uh, yes, okay, you want me to share? I, don't, I do not have the presentation here on my side. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, just yeah? give me a slide 22 yeah and then I'll have to say next I guess okay yeah that's fine I should do yeah that. Uh, 
Sorry, just bear with me a second. <clears throat> And in the meantime, I may as well start. Um, so yeah, I'm do you want to introduce yourself? In, yeah, I'm zooming in from Inverness. Um, I've been working on the Seed Sovereignty Program in the first phase, started in 2018. And because I've done a lot of work with uh, crofters and the Scottish Crofting Federation, um, I've been trying to roll out the Seed Sovereignty Program in crofting areas, focusing on cereals that are that were or still are in some areas uh, traditional for crofting and trying to broaden that out so the name of my presentation is reintroducing traditional grains on island crofts And um, and you may be aware sorry, that sorry. Uh, it's. Yeah, it's yeah. Really I'll just have to now. scroll. I'm really sorry. Okay, yeah, sorry. There we, there we go. Thank you. Just. Oh, oh. can we go back, please? Oh, sorry, it's, it's sorry, running. For some uh, reason, it's skipping. I'll try again. Hmm. I'm sorry, it keeps skipping for some reason. I can try again. There you go. <laughs> yes, oh, no. so here we go. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, good. It's fine. Can we can we go back one one please? Yeah. Sorry. Okay. So um heritage grains in crofting areas. Um the main one and the main and the oldest surviving one is bear or traditionally Scottish barley or Yorna in Gaelic or used barley and if you would google that you would probably end up at the Agronomy Institute in Orkney um, they've done a lot of work on bear um, marketing it for bear bannocks uh, contracts with whiskey um, but if you'd start thinking about growing it on highland crofts a lot of grain growing had disappeared there sometimes for over 100 years so this is news and we had BBC coming happily in to film uh, what we were doing because it was really kind of news for these areas where the grain had disappeared a long time ago. Um, I had two or th yeah, three sites in 2019, a small group of very interested and dedicated growers who were interested in doing this, introducing grain growing, heritage grain growing. So there was the Sheeling uh, near Bewley, um, and we had uh, on the Isle of Lismore um, a site, a croft there. And we had in 2000, the group formed end of 2018. And then in 2019, we were lucky to partner up with uh, Scot Soil Association Scotland, the plant team project, and we could organize three very successful events. Next slide, please. And the first event was at the Sheeling, and the Sheeling is an outdoor education project. They're also running an outdoor nursery. Uh, it's off grid. Um, you can see there the sewing. Uh, we did that as a collective, sewing different. We had bear, we had uh, small oats, we had different, different varieties there. And the, the, on the right side, you can see the picture in 
in June, a little bit later, and you can see there was very uneven emergence and there was an enormous weed pressure. Next slide, please. And this was the, the, at the second event that was about small scale machinery. And what emerged through in this year and, and through these events was that there is a big issue with machinery. The moment you want to start uh, growing grain again, you need the machinery. And very often the machinery had disappeared. So I think this is an old winnowing machine that was bought at a second hand market. And that turned out to be, that's a topic that's going on through this um, project. And also we're sharing that with the, the colleagues in Wales. And we have one person now doing a little bit of historical research to see whether we can develop a machinery that's fit for the scale of crofting. Next one, please. And this is on Liz Moore. Um, on the right side, you can see after emergence, we're looking at an oat field there. Um, that was a huge event, I think over 30 people. We had Peter Martin coming from Orkney to talk about marketing there, different and research that he had done there. We had people from SRUC coming over to talk about the agronomy of uh, grain growing. And, um, and Mike on, on Lismore, he was lucky, he had a good harvest there. And, and because the, the beauty there was that we could link up with um, all the crofters in the village and it was very beautiful at the event there that people started discussing what had grown on Lismore um, years ago and and Mike could tap into that knowledge and could also help that they were helping out with the harvest. Next please. And if you look at the reasons why these crofters want to grow bear or oats and it's very simple become more self-sufficient for feed, for bear, for homegrown uh, proteins, especially in, in the uh, bear uh, pea mix, or just for human consumption, for porridge or bannocks. The straw is good for bedding or for crafts. Uh, of course, the shielding is an education project, so they will use it there for educational purposes as a demonstration project. Um, and of course, everyone who talks barley thinks about beverages, no secret beverages. Next one, please. Challenges here on the, on the left you see the, the, the one of the older crofters on, on uh, Lismore helping out with um, the harvest of the, the grain there in 2019. Um, well, this is the challenges are major. Uh, it's sourcing the seed, uh, and we were lucky there that I could help with that. And James Hutton has been instrumental in making more seed available. The know-how is a big issue. Uh, the machinery I've mentioned already. The soils are of course in the west of Scotland are always an issue, acidic, um, in poor condition, and very often uh, not, with not good drainage, etc, etc. There was huge wheat pressure in fields that were just going into cultivation. And then there was the issue of predators, such as deer, geese, hare, uh, pigeons, mice, and you name it. Um, in many fields, Lismore is lucky that it doesn't have deer, but in most uh, highland areas, the deer pressure is such that if you don't have a deer fence, you can really actually forget about uh, growing cereals. And then, then we haven't even talked about uh, marketing because we're, this project is really about getting um, grain growing, regardless where the markets are, because a lot of that is for self-sufficiency. Next, please. So 2020 started good. We had more seeds made available by a bear researchers at the James Hutton. Um, and they were made available for small scale growing, such as in crofts. On the left there, you can, there was a new project in Achelty Bui, that's the Koyak Ascent uh, Living Landscape Project they joined. And because they were interested in uh, doing um, a barley trial on their demonstration croft. And luckily, we could get the seeds to them through lockdown and, um, and so this, they, they could go on with sowing. Um, yeah, otherwise most of our activities have been on Zoom. There is a little video there about the sowing on, uh, in Achelty Bui and it's, you can see there it's sown with a, uh, with a fiddle. You can see if the uh, video works and otherwise you just go to YouTube and um, you can share that afterwards. Mm. 
this is a major technical challenge. Um, Andy, it's, have... it's only yeah, it's only one minute, so we can we can easily skip it. Um, I confess that I didn't click anything before um, before starting the session, so I I don't know if the settings will be right, but I hope they will. I'll see if I can find it, and 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 maybe we can play it. Um, after yes, after, and I will go to the next slide. That's my last we'll one. And then we do the video later on. I think that's better. Okay, sorry. No, that's all right. It's mm -hmm. only 1 minute 25. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's one more slide coming, I think. Yes. And like I said, we most of our events were on Zoom this year. But last Friday, uh, we decided with, with the core group uh, to come together on this more um, and to check again what happened there with, 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 with Mike had shown and just to get together and, and get in contact and um, and it was quite I called it a mini field school we it was a very extensive program that we crammed into a couple of hours and then we had to leave because we couldn't stay there overnight um, because of the new restrictions in Scotland um, so we were looking at the, the, the oats that Mike had harvested last year and and the dehulling is still an issue that we haven't solved. So uh, you see, you see them looking at oats there and and sort of pick their brains. How can we get this dehulled? In the meantime, there was new machinery there. Everyone was excited about new machinery there. There was at least two or three kits, um, mostly for seed cleaning. So that is really again um, an ongoing interest um, to keep the machinery expand expand on the machinery, and and clean it and and get it repaired and and try to use it. Um, Mike, we did some intercropping there, or uh, not we, um, and we were also checking um, more general, um, like what is a good seed head? We, we went into the field and said, okay, what do we like about these seeds head? How, we, how do we judge them? Um, so we did some scoring there that was quite good. And then we also looked at the legumes that were sown and to see whether we could find out whether there had, um, had been active, actively nitrogen fixing. Look at the nodules, that's when you see the picture on the left there. Um, that's we're checking there for uh, not, um, yeah uh, nitrogen fixing so it was a it was a very dense day um, with a lot of activities and there was only four of us so we could do it rather quickly but it's a good it was a good layout to repeat in the future it's kind of a model of, of how to learn on the site and with one another I, one researcher was there from the James Hutton she has been on this program now also for two years so we're kind of having this core group um, and we can move fast. And I think that's my last slide here. Thank you. Would you Thanks, want to Charlie. play the um, video? Should I play the video now? Yeah. Okay, I'll do that. So, um, so we're north of Alapu here. Close on the on the Atlantic uh, coast. Then. That's really it. Thank you, Andy. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Andy. Wow, that was worth every moment. Fantastic. So, uh, last but not least, we have Richie. Um, 
And I do have the slides if, if they're needed. Uh, we'll give it a go myself, but if it falls yeah, out, right. then we'll come back to it. So, uh, hello everyone. Great to see so many people here. I actually wasn't expecting such an attendance. It's really good to see so many people interested in SEED. Um, so, I'm Richie. I started about three months ago as the Lowland Scotland coordinator for the SEED Sovereignty Program. Um, I've worked the last 10 years in different horticultural therapy projects. And I have grown seed at a couple of these projects and uh, yeah, just excited to get more and more seed grown in Scotland. Um, the, I realize uh, most of you seem to be in Northern England and not Scotland. So I hope that you aren't already getting bored with our Scottish heavy material this evening. Uh, but I would like to remind you of the old horticultural adage of buy plants from more north than where you are so that they'll be hardy. And uh, this is something when I was studying in the Dublin Botanic Gardens, I sp used to spend a lot of time in Belfast, used to go up every couple of weeks. And my one of my tutors was always asking me to get this and that for her in garden centers up in the north of Ireland because she wanted that little extra bit of hardiness than you would get with uh, plants growing around Dublin. So at this moment in time, there are no commercial vegetable seed producers in Scotland. And this is not good at all. Uh, obviously for our food sovereignty and our seed sovereignty, we have a lot of work to do in order to get there. Myself and Maria will be working on producing an online seed saving course for Scotland next year. So keep your eyes out for that. If you are based in Scotland, we're gonna to try to connect people who are already growing seed and introduce, indeed introduce people that want to grow seed in an online environment. Because obviously we, no one knows what's gonna happen with COVID. So we're planning online now. Um, so before I share my screen, I just want to say the thing I love about seeds, obviously apart from the beautiful vegetables that we eat and the beautiful plants that we get to enjoy in other ways, is the stories that they have to tell. And uh, one of those stories is the story I'm going to tell you today about a cabbage. So it might sound a bit strange, but I'm going to try to get you all as excited about a cabbage as I am excited about this cabbage. So I hope you all bear with me. And we were asked to bring some seeds with us today, so I have some of them here. That is the Gorda Hork cabbage. And that's from the Irish Seed Savers. And I have a whole load of these packets, which I am divvying up into smaller packages for the, for the Glasgow Seed Library. So it was great to see seed libraries mentioned here already. Uh, we hope that next year we're gonna have a lot of people growing Gorda Hork cabbage around Glasgow and indeed all around Scotland because as you see, it's a fantastic cabbage. So uh, let's get going. I'll just try to share my screen. Um, hope everyone can good. see that okay. Yeah, looks good. So the Gorda Hort cabbage. So it's a Scottish cabbage with an Irish history. Or maybe someone else might say that it's an Irish cabbage with a Scottish history. Because for over 100 years, it's been grown in Ireland. And what we can tell, it hasn't been grown in Scotland in recent memory anyway. So uh, Gord Hork is in northwest of Ireland, up in Donegal. It's a little Irish-speaking community, very small village uh, right by the sea. And uh, one of the families there that raised Gorda Hork for three generations, going on to four generations now, is the Sweeney's. So Owen Sweeney Sr. around 1910 was working in Duns, which as you can see here on the right, is just south of Edim Edinburgh, quite close to the border with England. Uh, so he was working clearing bracken, making a bit of extra money to bring back to Donegal to his family. And when he was there, he learned the skill of seed saving with cabbages that obviously farmers were doing there, the people that he got in contact with were already doing that, with these huge cabbages. And this is what's become known as the Gorda Hort cabbage because the original name has been lost in time. So around 1910, Owen Sweeney Sr. brought Gorda Hort cabbage seed back to Donegal with him uh, and started planting it there to save, save seed, but also for the economy of the family farm. And they were growing it mostly as a fodder crop. I'll get onto that soon. Uh, but it's also a fantastic eating cabbage. So Owen Sweeney taught his son, John Sweeney, who grew it then for another 40 odd years, 
who taught his son, Owen Sweeney Jr., uh, how to grow this cabbage for seed. And um, it was in 2002 when Sean O'Gothian, who was the head gardener of Glenvey Castle, fantastic historical castle and garden up in Donegal, was driving by and noticed this field filled with huge cabbages. And uh, so he stopped in, knocked on the door and wanted to talk about the cabbages. It was like a man after my own heart, really. Uh, and he met Owen Sweeney Jr. and heard a little bit of the story about the cabbage. And he bought a half pound of the Gordahore cabbage seed off uh, Owen Sweeney for five euros. Uh, Gorda Hork, otherwise known as Gorda Hork, uh, up in Donegal. As you can see from this photo, it looks a lot like Scotland up in that part of Ireland. It really does. The climate is quite similar. So to me, it's no real surprise that Gorda Hork cabbage that did well in around Duns, did, also, did well when it moved to Donegal. And I really do believe that if we start growing it again, whether it be on the West Coast or the Highlands in Scotland, Gordor cabbage is gonna really change things here. It's something I'm very enthusiastic for people to start growing. So fodder cabbage, that is indeed what the Sweeney family sell it for mostly. Uh, they feed their own cows with Gordor Hork. They sell it to other people who keep cows as winter fodder. And a lot of it is actually sold to turkey farmers in the west of Ireland, in the northwest of Ireland, and they fatten up their turkeys for the Christmas market on it. A lot of turkey farmers are, uh, think that it's one of the best things to fatten up a turkey. So if you do keep birds or cows, it's good for that. But let me tell you from first-hand experience with this cabbage, it's absolutely delicious. It, usually when you think about giant vegetables, you're thinking of things that have no flavor that are grown purely for their size. Gorda Hork could win one of these country village giant cabbage competitions quite easily, but it's also damn good eating, even at that size. I know someone that made sauerkraut out of it, and by the time they had grated the head, they had three or four huge, absolutely massive uh, barrels of sauerkraut out of one head of cabbage. And it was delicious sauerkraut. It's good raw to make coleslaw. It's good to cook up and have it with your potatoes, whatever way you have your cabbage. Uh, so is it a fodder cabbage? Yes, but it's also a table cabbage, absolutely. So Glenvey Castle, this is a picture of the walled garden and that's where Shawna Goatine works. Um, and there's some young Gorda Hork there, very, down the very bottom. Uh, so in 2002, he started to grow uh, the Gorda Hork there. Uh, see if he could get it growing as well as the Sweeney's could. And as you can see here on the left, you can see it a little bit bigger just beside that uh, box, box hedge. Um, Sean had studied just like myself in the National Botanic Gardens in Dublin, and he sent some seeds that year also to Joan, who's the head gardener in the walled garden there. You can see here under the netting a couple of young Gorda Horks. Uh, so in 2003 then, because the Gorda Hork was sown in 2002, the end of the summer. It's treated as a spring cabbage, really. You, put, you plant it out in a seed bed in August, around January or February, you prick out your best plants and you plant them out at the right space in your beds. And then March or April, you would have a decent sized cabbage, but you leave that till August and you get these gigantic cabbages that I'm getting to in a minute. So Glenvey and the National Botanic Gardens, Wall Gardens, they're obviously very popular with visitors and everyone was wowed walking in that summer to see these absolutely enormous cabbages grown there. They really were something, a talking point in the garden and something really good for visitor experience. So Sean actually sent most of that half pound of seed that he bought to the Irish Seed Savers, who are a fantastic seed company, one of our partners best based in the west coast of Ireland in County Clare. Uh, and they have been very good over the years at building up the stock of Gorda Hork. And indeed, you can buy uh, Gorda Hork cabbage seed from them if you're at all interested in growing it yourself. Or they have a huge, uh, absolutely fantastic catalogue of other seeds I would look at buying from them. Something about Irish seed savers that I really love that I'm living in Scotland is the climate is quite similar. The West coast of Ireland gets 280 to 300 days of rain a year. And that's very similar to some parts of Scotland. So when I'm thinking about buying seed now that I can grow in Scotland for seed to try to get acclimatized, obviously buying from uh, West Coast of Ireland makes a lot more sense than buying from 
Kent and Cornwall, but the, there's fantastic people down there as well. But it'll just take that extra few generations for stuff to get acclimatized. While I think stuff coming from the west coast of Ireland is not going to take that long. So if you don't know Irish seed savers, please do check them out and know that they have played an absolutely instrumental role in building up this seed for uh, the home gardener market. And brown envelope seeds in West Cork also started to grow. It's the, uh, uh, they're based on West Cork. Obviously, the climate is a little bit different there. But it's, it proved so popular that uh, two, at least two uh, seed companies in Ireland are able to sell it now. And there's more and more interest in it every year. Everyone that buys it and grows it absolutely loves it. It's very hardy. Um, so just to give you a little bit of idea of the size of the cabbage, this is one in... Uh, Glen Bay, it, the leaves can go kind of to almost a meter apart and the heads to a little bit over the size of a football and uh, there really is a lot of good eating in them. A uh, real good talking point in your garden as well as delicious cabbage and a really good fodder crop as well. So this is my last si slide. I've kind of gradually tried to show you how big they get. This is a picture actually of a uh, brown envelope seeds garden that they kindly shared with me to and were happy for me to share in the presentation. The absolute size of it, that hasn't even headed up yet, and that's coming up to a meter across. Uh, huge, huge cabbage. Uh, delicious eating, and I'd encourage anyone uh, wanting to grow something a little bit different, and I'd encourage anyone wanting to grow seed in Scotland, please consider growing some Gorda Hork, and uh, get in contact with me if you'd like some seed, I'd be more than happy to send you some. That okay? Fantastic. Yeah, thank you, Richie. I, I certainly I'm pretty keen. Even in Yorkshire, I think that you know some some things will probably do better from the from the same seed savers from the Irish seed savers. Or yeah. I'm just um, putting my email into the chat there. If anyone wants to contact me about Gorda Hork, about anything seed related, Scotland, Northern England. Uh, if anyone, I'm just going to use this opportunity to have my mic on, that I'm trying to compile lists of heritage Scottish cultivars of vegetables at the moment. Um, so if anyone is aware of any, whether you're based in Scotland or not, you know any histories of any, any Scottish cultivars, please do contact me. I've just put my email there into the chat. It's richie at guyanet.org. Uh, I'd be very interested to hear your stories because we do want to start growing Scottish vegetables in Scotland again for <coughs> seed for growers. So uh, <coughs> thanks for your time. Thank you, Richie, that was great. Definitely a lot of interest in the chat if you didn't get a chance to look at it, Richie. Um, and um, yeah, so I think the idea now is to have a short break. Um, and so feel free to get yourself, Andy? Well, I'm just wondering, we're about 20 minutes behind schedule on the on the plan, so I just encourage people to be quite quick. Very prompt, yeah. So a quick toilet break, really, rather than a... Turn around, touch the grounds. Water rather than tea. <laughs> How mean. How mean of me. Cold milk. <laughs> yeah. All right. So see you back in, in five minutes maximum, so 25 past. Okay. Thanks, folks.
Andy, is there a way I can scroll back to see all the chat? I can only see the last ones. Um, have you dropped out the call at any point? No. Okay, then you should be able to see all the chat. Okay. It should be there. It's a matter of scrolling up. Yeah, just scroll yeah, up. Right. And, and you can, um, if you're not aware, there's on the chat there are three little um, circles where it says to everyone on the right hand side. If you click on there, you can um, save chat. So if there's anything you want to save from there, you can just save it, which might be a useful record for the meeting. Yeah. I've already got you down, Adrian. Uh, Mick huh? says I'm very mean. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I would have been much meaner. I would have just said, turn around and touch the ground. Come on, let's get back to it. Okay. I just, I, I'm, uh, in the evening, I, my head goes a bit, mm. No, no, it's good. I'm glad you're not mean like me. <laughs> well, we just give more time, still the same amount of time maybe to the chat or five minutes less, but a bit less on feedback. And the five minutes at the end doesn't have to be five minutes. Yeah, there is a survey I want to share. As long as you're aware of it. I just wanted to make sure you were aware of the timing. Um, yeah. yeah. I knew I knew it would go over. <laughs> That's fine. Five to ten to minutes. Go, ah. No, it's going to be ten minutes, isn't it? But we've all got too much to say. <laughs> oh, no, we should start again at five uh, in, 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 at the time. Ulrich, where oh, are yeah. you living at the moment? Northeast, northwest? Scotland. I need to know which breakout room to put you in. Hi, Ulrich. Hi, Andy. Yes, no, my, 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 my microphone is not working. I need to, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah that's what okay. I'm, I'm trying to find out where, where everybody is. If you have a look at your well, I yeah, I, the right yeah. breakout room. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, in Leamington. I'm in Leamington. Choose one. Leamington Spa. Nice to see you. Yeah. Dennis works with us now. He's he's given this presentation. Yeah, that's amazing news. That's so yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. You know him as well. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. Check that's five minutes, Charlie. I make it 20. Oh, yeah, 25. There we go. Definitely time. But OK, so the tricky thing is that now people have to go into breakout rooms. Do, does it, will they be put in it automatically? Well, they and will, but there's just a small number of names that I haven't assigned yet because not everybody okay. responded. So, so if I just wait. go through now and ask a few people. So um, Francois, I think, is really just on from a technical perspective. So Francois, you could say where you, where you want us, me to put you. Scotland, South, Scotland, North, North East England or North West England. So I need to know from Francois, Liz Charles, oh, it says Durham. Actually, that's a giveaway, isn't it? That's Northeast. So I'll put Liz Charles in Durham. Mick, where are you from? Richie, where are you from? Ulrich, where should I put you? And XR Sheffield, I'm going to put in North. I don't mind. Put me where, 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 where. It's, yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to put you. Sheffield sounds good. I'll, I'll put you, actually, I'm going to put you in Scotland, Ulrich, because okay. no, no, there's no, people there. So I just need XR Sheffield, which I think is north east ish. <laughs> oh, and just left. Um, so uh, Mick, it's quite Richie, a bit confusing. Or... Yeah, were you asking me? Is it Andy? Yeah, I, I was XR Sheffield, I'm I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> where do you want to go northeast? Uh, I guess somewhere, yeah, probably. Yeah, Yorkshire. So I just need Mick. Yeah, and York, Richie. Yorkshire. It's definitely Yorkshire. Yeah, yeah. Mick or Richie. Yeah, I'm I'm Scotland. Lowland. Oh, you're Scotland. Of course you are. Yeah, that's. Um, so I would suggest it. It looks like there's not many people from either of the Scottish regions in the chat. I could be wrong on that. 
Okay, I've just had had jo Josie, myself, Ray. I've got that. That would be so the low need, I just need Nick, really. And Graham? I've done Graham. that. I've done all these people. Okay, what I'll yeah. do is I think I'll, I'll put you into a breakout room. If you don't have an invite, then I'll work out where to put you. Thank so, you, Andy. Uh, Charlie, what do you want people to do? Uh, right, so this is where if you read the part about bringing your seed and your passion for seed, um, the idea is in, in the breakout uh, group, say, you know, what you've brought, where you've brought it, uh, what you can offer and what you need from any seed networks that you might either be part of or want to join. So that's, uh, you know, what your seed is, what, you know, why, why you've brought it, what, what, what you're passionate about, why you're passionate about it, um, and then what you can offer and what you need from the, from the networking. Okay, great. And I'll, I'll, I'll circulate that as a message as and well. And we will we'll ask you to sort of put something in the chat afterwards. Is that right, Andy? So yeah, that we and just get a bit more feedback from everyone. And, and then hopefully... 15 minutes? Yeah. That sounds good. Okay, so I'll, still got... I'll do 15 minutes. I'll give you a five minute reminder and um, any questions, just leave the room and come back and I can help. It should all well, be. Ideally, fun, everyone's so. got a minute or two to speak. Yeah, so yeah, make sure everyone, big ears, lots of listening. Grant, I'll press the magic button. If any problems, Thank just you. let me know. So I'll pause recording, recording back on. We kind of lost Charlie, I think, or did Charlie manage to get back in? I can't remember now. Oh, Charlie is there, good. Okay, great. Hi, Charlie, you are here, that's good. I was just, I couldn't remember whether you've managed to get back in or not. I did. I think my computer got overloaded with all the things that were open. It's too much excitement with that big cut cabbage. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> okay, well over to you. Um, yeah, so thank you folks. Um, I'm glad I could join the room even if it, I was a bit delayed. Um, there were lots of, uh, you know, variety in what people shared. So I think it might be of interest um, perhaps for everyone to see you know, some of the conversation that was uh, had, and maybe even if you'd like to put, put the same thing, you know, what what you're uh, able to offer and what you're interested in. And also if you had a particular seed you were talking about because it's something you wanted to share um, or something of interest or something you want to know more about. Um, so feel free to put, put something in the chat now. Um, and then we, uh, I, we, they, we are recording this and then we can also uh, just reflect on that a bit and um, you know think about if there are any key things that we uh, you know we can help with and support if anyone else has some responses for other people so yeah, I'll um, save the chat can't we so that's that's useful. yeah so yeah if you're happy to post in the chat just to share that a bit more widely with people who weren't in the same group that would be great I mean, I could I could say something. So Mark's just posted about um, was it is this your guide, Mark, or is this the guide from the person in Slovenia? Ah, oh, from Slovenia. Okay, brilliant. Um, Hans, for example, told us about um, a muli that he's been uh, that he's bred, uh, so it doesn't bolt so easily. 
Um, and Mark also mentioned a chili chili seed that is particularly productive. Um, has some seeds to swap. So may, maybe if it encourages people to share, perhaps someone from each room could say something and then maybe share a bit more in the chat. Um, where are we? So who was in the north? Uh, Sorry, Charlie, I just disappeared then. Uh, what, what was it you asked? <laughs> Oh, I was just I was just sort of trying to encourage people because we don't have time for a big discussion, but it'd be great to hear a bit more from each room. Um, perhaps people could, one person from each room could say something and then that might inspire a bit more, you know, people posting in the chat different resources or info or what they're looking for. Do you want to say something else about our room, Pippa? I missed what you shared, actually. <laughs> Um, I was just sharing my uh, my potato. <laughs> Brilliant. Although I did share the seeds, but it didn't look quite as exciting in a plastic bag as it as an actual potato. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, we had a varied um, uh, uh, things that people were growing. It's really interesting. Uh, I particularly like the. Um, uh, I'm going to follow up on the link about the person who did a uh, how to organise. Uh, an online seed swap um, th that sounded quite good so I'm going to follow up on reading that. Brilliant thank you. Um, um, Rod is, was in the northwest would anyone from the northwest like to share something? I think people are quite inspired by the seed library and think that's a really good idea so um, you know, definitely share seeds with Lancaster Seed Library. That's a good good thing to do. Um, we're hoping at, in Bradford to start a seed library and, um, you know, follow the guidance from Lancaster Seed Library. Um, someone's asking, is anyone working with traditional seeds for textiles and natural dyes? Yeah, definitely. And, and interesting question. So if anyone's got answers to any of these questions. Um, I mean, I suppose another thing I can suggest is that if people are interested, I have started an email list. So you, so we could be part of an um, Northern Seed Saving email list. If, if you'd like to be on that list, um, you know, perhaps say in the chat, put your email and then I can add you to the list. So Paul said he's producing um, dye as greenwood, natural dye. Okay, so yeah, I'll, if, if people are interested, definitely put your email in the chat and then I can add you to the, um, to the list. And this way we, people can have conversations with each other ongoing. Okay, so um, and what about the folk in Scotland, in different parts of Scotland? Did, did you, what, what was... Uh, what were the main things? Well, I do lowlands first. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we had a quick go around. It's, it's so short for 15 minutes. We didn't really get into the, our teeth really into the networking stuff. But Josie is still here picking away at her Mizuna seed, we can see. I'm very happy to share that with anybody interested. I think Fantastic. she probably has a little bit too much Mizuna seed. Uh, Ray from uh, Mill Pond Flower Farm uh, started growing seeds uh, at his fl flower farm and wants to expand on that. Needs to build up on the skills and the networks and learn about machinery about that. Is very interested in expanding that and seeing what the next step is to go. And I'm very excited to see what Ray had to uh, talk more with Ray both about because he's from near where that cabbage is from uh, and also to see a flower farm and talk about flower seeds, which I spend my life talking about vegetables but I am a gardener and do love my flowers, so that's great. Uh, 
Mick came on holiday. He's not actually in Scotland, but he decided as he's on local lockdown, he wanted to go on holiday. So he joined Scotland. And we're talking about his own market garden, uh, uh, his desire to grow more perennial uh, brassicas, perennial vegetables in general, but mostly brassicas. Uh, and Hannah's a non-commercial grower in the Highlands, but decided to join us in, in the Lowlands. But sounds like she has a great big garden, uh, is already grown some seed and wants to grow some more seed. So we talked about what was needed for building the connections, building the network, building the education. And I tried to tell them that we in the Seed Sovereignty Program in Scotland, we're trying our very best to do this. And myself and Maria will be running a course next year. I can already see. Maria, are you scowling or are you happy with that? No, no, just, just looking forward to it. <laughs> okay, and sorry. actually, I, I, asked, I asked Hannah to, to, I thought she would be, because she's a vegetable, um, she's interested, so I thought she would be good to, to join your session. Your, your yeah. focus was more on vegetables. No, absolutely. It was great and, to have Hannah uh, there yeah. with us. Yeah. So yeah, just uh, Mick was also mentioning the need to like stay connected as Scotland and Northern England, because obviously our climates are a lot more similar than uh, yeah. southern, southern England. So we talked about how, what a shame it is that there's no commercial seed, open pollinated organic commercial seed producers more north than the co-op, the seed co-op in Lincolnshire, and hoping that uh, by building connections, uh, the great training that Charlie is going to be running in the near future will get people skilled up in, and hopefully builds up the enthusiasm and the drive for someone to start some commercial seed growing in Northern England and as well in Scotland, and that we should build and keep those uh, connections going. So yeah, that was our short 15 minutes low in Scotland. That's very productive. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, so there were, we are aiming to offer training, like Richie said, um, in regionally, as well as um, across the programme, the Seed Sovereignty programme, which is UK and Ireland. Um, so, so there is beginner or um, intro level training, and then there's intermediate and advanced training. So... Um, yeah, yeah, so I know that there was some intro level training in the north, um, I think uh, 2018, is that right? The end of 2018. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, we were, we aim to run something of, uh, like that again, and also an intermediate training. And, and then there will be a um, year long advanced training with the seed co-op. Um, and like Richie said, the, there is some, um, there's quite a lot of murmuring about, well, we should have a northern seed company. So it's early days, obviously, and I, you know, I don't think this will happen quickly. But um, as he says, because of the climate, it does seem to make sense that there's a lot more uh, regionally adapted seeds available. So, you know, a longer term project, but something that definitely needs to happen at some point. Um, and um, people that were trained at the, uh, well, I guess, I don't know, I guess advanced level or at least trained to sell seeds for the seed co-op. So some people in the north have been working with the seed co-op in order to be able to do that. And I know Hans has been a big part of the seed co-op. So um, if you're interested in, in that process, um, Hans will talk a bit more about his own experience of growing producing seed in the north for uh, uh, over 20 years he's been a biodynamic farmer and produced seed in the north so that will be part of the session on Wednesday um, but yeah so I've, there's lots of emails that's fantastic I'll definitely add you to the list um, does anyone want to mention anything else or put anything else in the chat I will definitely be re-watching the video in order to capture some of the things that have just been spoken and maybe not written down um, and I will definitely take all the emails um, for the seed saving network and I guess I don't know Richie and Maria you know whether we want to do something you know do, I, I don't know how we'll do it in terms of email lists but uh, at the moment I'm more than happy to put everyone on you know, one email list and then we'll see So people don't get bombarded. We'll see what works for, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and there is, yeah, before we sort of wrap up, there is um, a survey that's been designed by the Seed Sovereignty Programme. And so that's uh, to get 
some views and feedback of what influence it's having and uh, what you want to see from the seed sovereignty program so i will try and find a link for that and pop it in the chat <laughs> um let me see any uh, so if anyone else would like to have any final words or andy if you want if you'd like to say anything i will get that link no i think if i was to speak i would just give a shameless plug for the thermoculture session on thursday afternoon which will be a brilliant opportunity to hear about how you can design your farm to get ready for the environmental land management scheme but no that would be inappropriate so i think it should be back to you charlie <laughs> i think that's fair enough <laughs> Um, and, and clearly designing for your own seed production is obviously part of that. <laughs> yeah, no, so, absolutely. you know, it cool. all fits together. Yeah, definitely. If you want more localised food systems, then um, seed saving is essential. Great. Part of our happy, bright future. Um, yeah, sorry, this is a bit slow, but... Um, yeah, it was it was really great. Once we're in the chat, people mostly wanted to talk about the seed that you know that they want, were wanting to share, and I find that really inspiring. Um, you know, it's important that we have seed produced and that we have companies, but this this sharing is also really really key. Um, yeah. So. Well, I mean, what I can do is I can promise to add you to the email list, everyone that um, has put their email and I will send the, the survey. We're also going to share it via the conference and at the session on Wednesday. Um, so I don't really want to <laughs> keep people sat here whilst I look for it. It's just my computer's gone very slow with um, various things open. Is it on anything you've given to me, Charlie? Um, Maria and Richie have it. It's just my emails opening very slowly. It's um, well, of... it's to see well, to, to to get to give oh, you an, by an okay. few seconds. How about we encourage everyone to turn their um, mic off, and you could all show your appreciation for Charlie and all the seed savers that put work into the session. So um, just uh, yeah, you know. Yeah. Feel free to feel free to Yay. do a cheer and you know, you know. Oh, Charlie. Yay. Yay. Thanks yeah, to yeah. everyone yeah. for I I feel I think there's a lot of knowledge in this room. So definitely I'm really excited to that people are, you know, connecting more and that's it that's great. And thanks to Andy for yeah, making sure the tech side runs around. smoothly. Um Let's okay. See. I have Bye. the survey. I have the survey here. If anyone's oh, interested, I'm yeah. just putting it into the, the chat so it's not Google Doc. And uh, if you fill it out and send it in, it helps us to get information. But you also have a chance of winning a voucher for uh, the seed co-op to get some free seeds for next season. So please do fill it in, send it back into us, and it'll help us get the training and the networks and everything the way that people want them. So there you go. Thank you, Richie. <laughs> Great. Cool. So hopefully see you at the next session or another session at this conference. And see hopefully see some of your seeds soon as well. Yeah. <laughs> see you folks. Bye all. See yeah. well. Bye, Thank you, Charlie. Bye, bye everyone. Bye, bye, all. Maria. bye Maria. Bye, Ray. Thanks for all your chat. Right, I shall end.